procrastinators, and welcome to the Nerd Cube's Non Poop Awards 2014. That's right, today we are going to take a look at the very best of gaming in the year 2014. Yesterday was the very worst. You can go and have a look at that video and see the awfulness that came out this year. But today we celebrate the absolute very best. Best, we have some rules, I'll go over them once again. Nothing in early access, only things that have been fully released. If you don't see something, it's probably because it's in early access. Kerbal's not in here because it's in early access. Uh, only games I've played, so if there's something amazing, like, why do you do this? Well, I probably haven't played it. Uh, and it's releases between the last Poop Awards and this. Actually, the last Poop Awards was yesterday. Last non-Poop Awards, one year ago today, and this. Anything that fits in there can go in this list. Uh, we're going to start with a special mention, a game I've decided to not include in this list, even though it technically would be the shining star at number one, and that is GTA 5 on the PS4 and Xbox One. Yeah, I didn't want to include this game in the list simply because as much as it is sort of a brand new experience, first person's great, it's a huge improvement on the last one. It's still at its core the same game we had last time, and I'm not just going to put it up just because a different version came out. Otherwise, I'd have to have this in my top list three years in a row because the PC version comes out uh, a few months away. So, in fact, only about a month away now. So... I didn't want it in my list three years in a row, so I thought, you know what, it's going to get a special mention. If it was in this list, it would be number one. I will say that. This would have been the top game. I'll be honest, GTA V is my favourite game. PS4 and Xbox One versions of it are the definitive versions of it until January. Um, so it's it would have been, like, number one. It is my favourite game. I adore it. I love it. But it's exactly the same that came out last year. So, no, not going to go in there. Let's get started on this list. Number eight. Toy Box Turbos! Yes, Toy Box Turbos! If you didn't see it, was essentially another Micro Machines game. I love Micro Machines games. I've been playing this online. It's hilarious fun. Locally, it's hilarious fun. It's charming. It's a really tiny little price tag. It's a beautiful, silly go back. to it's, it's a game that they've taken, they've gone, right, what made this game great and how do we make it modern? And they basically went, we'll have the graphics, we'll make the physics handle better, but we're going to keep the core gameplay and how it all works and fits together the same. And that's exactly how you're supposed to do a reboot like this. And speaking of reboots like this, number seven, Gauntlet. Oh, I loved my time with Gauntlet. Absolutely loved. Solid, such a solid, great game. They looked at the, the previous versions and went, right, what's the key point about Gauntlet? And they went, uh, it's a game that's about killing thing, way more things than you and dungeon exploring. And they went, great, we'll make that. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. They kept the tone. They changed a lot of stuff up. They changed that how all, all the combat... All the combat completely changed, but because they kept the tone, it felt like a modern gauntlet game in a good way. No, no, we're going to hold your hand and let you through this. No, it was, it was vicious. It was vindictive. Trying to play that game in the harder modes is nigh on impossible, which makes it great fun. It's a great multiplayer luck, and I even forgive it for the darkened room with the giant spiders in that made me chip my pants like 18 times. In fact, if it didn't have that, it may be one slot higher. But, um, yeah, I pooped a lot. Number six, Oddworld, new and tasty. Okay, here's some further evidence that 2014 was the year of the good remake, with next year being the year all the early access games come out. Uh, Oddworld, new and tasty, a game that took a classic and made it better. They took everything about the game and went, we're going to remake this game, but we're going to improve every single little bit. And dear God, they made every bit of that game better. Absolutely superb. Great fun. Um, it's The downside, the only downside I have to Oddworld New and Tasty is they've sort of made the originals irrelevant. They've like, written them off. Like, if you're like, oh, I can play the original. Actually, I can play New and Tasty. It's better in every single way. And it's so rare to say that about a bloody redo. Number five, Killzone Shadowfall. How many of you are surprised to see this on the list? Yeah, Killzone Shadowfall. I loved it. It was so good, that little robot you could order around, Jeffrey. So much tactics that, because normally when you order some around, you get pissed off that they're doing the wrong thing. An immortal regenerating robot that can teleport anywhere fixes all of those problems. The AI is too robotic. They made him a robot. That's the most clever way to get out of that problem. Um, but not only that, the level design was nice and open. Uh, there was interesting stuff. The cities were all futuristic, and they really let you get in there. You sort of could fly around them and go different bits of it. The, like those trains zooming past really fast was great. Uh, the story was okay. I normally criticize stories a lot, but it was actually kind of okay. It was paced quite well. I had a really fun time with Killzone Shadowfall. I, I liked it a lot. Number four, Little Big Planet 3. Man, I was worried about this game. I worried that this game was gonna suck so much because it wasn't made by Melee Molecule. It was made by other people. I was like, oh, what are they gonna do with it? They just made it better. The story mode is by far the best single player it's ever had. 
ever. Like, the inclusion of the new guys is great fun, but just the depth they've added to it, like having 16 layers instead of the three we've always had, just meant so much more was happening and so much more moved around. And it's just, it's the most complex sort of creator ever. And they unchilded the game. The game was very much sort of a two-button game. There's the grab and there's the jump and that's it. Now there's loads of buttons and there's a quest menu. Each level's sort of like a hub world. It, it just... They really, really put effort into making it a different game. They sort of made it more complicated in the process, but I think it works. I think it works really well, and I think it is the best Little Big Planet we've ever had. Really. Sorry, Media Molecule, but really. Number three, Roundabout. Oh, Giorgio, we had such fun driving around in that weird little coulda, 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 an open world puzzle B-movie remake thing. What the bloody hell was that game? I still don't know. I finished it. I love it. I'm trying to 100% it. That's how much I like. It's very rare I even try to put 100% into a game now, but I absolutely adored Roundabout. I have put many, many hours into exploring it, and it was just something so... It was a weird combination. It was a jam and tomato ketchup sandwich. You think it's not going to work, and when you try it, you're happy you did, because it's amazing. I'm not entirely sure about jam and ketchup sandwiches. I assume they work. Sweet and sour? Maybe. I'm going to go try that in a minute. Number two, Titanfall. A multiplayer only first person shooter getting this high on my list must be a very special multiplayer only first person shooter and it is and I love it. I have spoken at length about my love of the smart pistol and how it works and the, the wall running jumping. It just really refreshed the first person shooter genre. I, I love first person shooters. I just find them so stale recently now they have a spunk goggle wee wee uh, style of shooter with oh, take over and all that sort of thing. I don't like taking cover. I like running along walls, jumping on a giant robot, shooting out its stuff and then leaping off 50,000 feet to the sky as it explodes underneath me killing all the enemy's men as then I land and lock onto some and it's a great game, and an awesome thing is like guaranteed to happen twice a match. Just something you're like, holy shit, did you see that? It's a constant highlight reel of a game. It's incredible fun, and it's a multiplayer game I actually enjoy, and that is the rarest. Oh, that is the rarest of the flowers. And number one, The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. It seems fitting that my top game for 2014, the year of the remakes, is a remake itself. Finding of Isaac Rebirth is so good. I have played it every day since it came out. Like, literally every single day, I've put at least an hour into that game. And I'm constantly coming away with like, oh, have you seen this? Oh, have you seen this? This new things. It, it's just, it gets deeper. Every time you play it, it gets deeper. I think that's what I absolutely love about it. It just, it never, you never hit bottom of it. I don't think there is a bomb. I think it just keeps going. I don't think there's an end. Like, you look on a YouTube video and someone's playing with a character you've never seen in a level you've never seen against enemies you've never seen, with items you've never seen. You're like, what? How do you do all these things? It's great. And the items combine together in the weirdest ways. And you just... Sometimes you're a god and you just vaporize everything and sometimes you're not. And it's just insane. And I want to keep playing over and over and over again. And it's, it's so fulfilling with how much stuff there is to unlock. It is a game... Everyone should own and everyone should play because it's pretty damn simple as well. It's a simplistic game, just very simple controls. Walk this way, aim that way, just, you know, bombs. That's sort of it. And then it just, as you get further and further in, you combine the items in confusing ways and it's just mental deep. It's mental deep. I love it. I want everyone to play it. And that is why it is the top game of 2014. And that's the end. I'm going to go have a lie down. I'm kidding, of course, I'm gonna go play Binding of Isaac. Thank you very much for watching, and ta-ra. Enter the domain of the nerd cube. Videos dropping from above like bird poop. Enter the domain of the nerd cube. Videos dropping from above like